Um, I'm now, as Erin says, at FF Venture Capital, an early stage VC firm based in Manhattan. Now we're all sort of distributed across the Eastern Seaboard, but we focus mainly on pre-seed, seed, and Series A investments into emerging technology companies with a focus on robotics, drones, um, insure tech, fintech. So any sort of like um, AI uh, based company that can be sort of used in a B2B SaaS uh, methodology and then a fair amount of consumer companies as well. So our portfolio is about 70% deep tech and 30% consumer. We invested in companies like Indiegogo and Owlet, which is a baby monitor uh, with Clarity, uh, New Age Meats, which is sort of a, a cultured meat. Or I, I like to call it craft meat company now. So they take you know porcine cells and reproduce them and make them into sausage. And that's what they're working on now. So sort of a wide range of investments, but most people on the team have an AI or machine learning background or exposure to fintech and insure tech. We invest around 500K median check size, try to invest for 10% of the company and take a board seat to be helpful in terms of business strategy and uh, you know, giving the companies insight into how other, uh, other great companies are run. So I've been there for almost three years now. I'm now a senior associate and yeah, it's been a wild ride, but very interesting. So thanks for having me. So I, oh God, this is so, it's hard to go back in time. Like I look young, but I'm actually quite old. I went to Tufts University undergrad and studied economics. Um, with an eye to work on Wall Street. So uh, my first, I guess, major job was at Morgan Stanley on the fixed income derivatives trading floor. So I was a trader assistant and I would help, you know, reconcile trades. So just make sure they went through, make sure all the numbers were correct, compile them at the end of the day, talk to the trader about what decisions they had made and then on to the next day. So uh, that was my childhood dream. Like as a little kid, I was like, I wanna work on the trading floor. I saw the men yelling and waving the papers and said, I wanna do that dad. And he was like, okay, whatever, but fine. So <laughs> that's what I did. And I realized pretty quickly that like that environment is just rough, like for anybody, but for a woman and a woman of color, it was particularly intense. So I made the genius decision to go and work as a fashion model, which is just like the most loving and caring industry in the world, as you all know and ended up working in fashion for um, almost 10 years, um, doing things like Project Runway and, you know, Elle Magazine and all kinds of stuff. Um, I obviously didn't become famous because you've never seen me before, but I, you know, had a really interesting experience. Um, okay, that's a, that's a, wow, that's an interesting question too. I think um, technically, the first company I started that had like an EIN, you know, tax ID and, and had like its own sort of bank account was called Berkshire Collective. And I'd had the idea to uh, originally like distill the sort of aromas and like senses of the Berkshires, which is where I grew up, like very close. I'm in, I'm in Albany now, but I grew up in the Berkshires. And there's all these amazing like heather and lavender and like fir tree smells that I would love for people to have in their homes as like experiences. And so I thought, oh, I'll like make a company that does this sort of like home fragrance. And that's just really like, that's a lot, that's a lot to do. So I kept the name and said, what am I actually naturally good at? And what do I have access to? I have a computer, I have, you know, web, uh, web platform, like design knowledge and, and website design knowledge. I'll do like email marketing or digital marketing for small companies in my hometown. So that's what I did. I just sort of like hung out a shingle as a consultant and said, you know, to people that I'd known, previous clients, I can run your digital marketing strategy from email to social and whatever's in between, and you can pay me X a month. And that like really helped um, me sort of stay afloat as I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do post modeling. Um, there was a, a, a startup that my friend had, had started and asked me to join right before that. So being on the founding team of, um, of her like burgeoning business was really great. Like she's sort of a firebrand and already had a lot of experience building a company. So for her to tap me and say, you seem dissatisfied with what you're doing. Like, I think your skills could be better used this over here was really exciting and emboldening. And, you know, I, in hindsight, it was like, I had no idea, like, honestly, what I was doing in terms of like the practical aspect, but my natural talents were really well positioned. So it was an interesting study on someone seeing your potential before you do and then putting you in the right position and then you doing quite well there. So it was great. It was an innovation consulting firm. We went into large companies and helped them figure out the millennial cohort as it applies to the products they were trying to sell or basically products they were trying to sell, whether that was like technology products or you know body care, home care kind of stuff. So 
it was a really, that was great too. Um, when we spoke the other day, you told me about your experience with prime response. Would you mind talking a little bit about that? Yeah, there's a guy in the Berkshires and that, this is kind of reminds me a lot of like you all. He came up with a product. It's like a social media posting platform through which you could post across channels simultaneously. Now you have plenty of companies that do that. But back then that was kind of like, you're going to do what with what? And, and he was just sort of operating and building this, this platform and real, thinking this is going to be really valuable. Wow, this would be a great thing for us to use for posting about, you know, posting advertisements for cars or trucks or what have you at our dealerships, because people are reading newspapers to look for cars, but they're definitely on Facebook and they're on Instagram and they're everywhere else, like sort of sitting ducks waiting for you to advertise to them. Um, and so that's what we did. Like we figured out how to use the APIs of various social media, you know, platforms to post across them. And it was great. It was like a nine person team. Everybody had a little bit to do with everything, the engineers, the business analysts, the you know, customer success people, product managers, et cetera. We all kind of work together as a, on a small team to build this product and to sell it and to, you know, maintain our customer base. And, you know, at some point, like when your business is doing well, somebody comes along and wants to buy it <laughs> unless you like exit. So the parent company that came in to buy it just had a totally different vibe, like no more pajamas on Zoom calls, like no more working from home. Because back then, work, back in the day when we all went into the office, like was not okay every day. So that really harshed my, you know, my vibe. And I just said, I don't necessarily want to do this anymore. Like, this is great being on a small startup team and and learning the ins and outs of what it takes to build a product specifically. The engineering team was stellar. Like I love those guys so much. It was so easy to communicate with them. It was easy to get things built and made for customers that wanted them. Their skill set was so high and their EQ was high as well. But the politics of like working for a large corporation doesn't mesh well with me. So I ended up stepping away to work for the innovation consulting firm. Um, Dominion dealer solutions, which is like, <laughs> I had like a, let's call it a life changing event. And I had to decide like, what do I want to do with my life? Like, what do I love to do? Where's my life going? Why, like, why am I here? And through like meditation courses and, you know, all kinds of stuff, I figured out that like technology is my calling in, in one way or the other. And I wanted to just be very simple about it and go back to coding. So I was just Googling like coding on lot, coding classes and near me. I think that's literally what I said, coding classes near me. And the um, TCE program popped up from RPI and like every single thing on the list was like exactly what I had had previous desire to study and understand and sort of insecurities about not really knowing. So like commercializing advanced technologies, business implications of emerging technologies, uh, starting up a new venture, <laughs> um, you know, different things that were the missing pieces to like, how do you get from a, you know, a startup to a venture back startup to like a fully fledged company, you know, and all the while you're sort of offering this awesome technology to the world. And, and yeah, I just went through all of the, the process and before I knew it, I was on campus. And then I was, as soon as I stepped on campus, I was like, this is where I should be. I know the like brutalist structures and the, the very like studious people and how quiet it all is, is maybe not everybody's cup of tea, but like that's exactly what I needed to just focus and just be in the moment and nerd out for a year. Um, professor Trump, or I guess I don't know if I can call him professor anymore, but Thomas Triscari, Dr. Thomas Triscari had a class called Managing on the Edge. And it was like an elective for spring where you could basically like start your own project or company or whatever you wanted to do. It was your up to up to you for the TCEs, the, the Lally students. And he encouraged me like early on in the school year to like be ready to get into this class or try out for the class. And I said, I don't know what I'm gonna build, but I'll try. Like I'll just we'll see. By the time I get there, maybe I'll know. And I thought, okay, I bet I could get funding for a series of events or like maybe a one-off event. So I hosted a conference and I called it the women of color conference and it was for entrepreneurial women of color and I got told all kinds of things along the way I was trying to raise money for it I went to like you name it big bank you name it big company and just said look I'm trying to you know do this I'm working on the project for class and I kind of just need a little bit of funding it's the same idea as is sort of fundraising for a company but just on a much smaller scale I'd like to have a day where I have speakers come in and talk about the industry as a whole 
and then have two different channels where you can decide, okay, I'd like to spend the morning with Rich Honan, who's a lawyer at Phillips Lytle, uh, talking about drafting founders agreements. So what does it look like to, what does a term sheet look like? What's the founders agreement? Like what are the sort of legalities behind starting a company? Then I had the director of Google, not Google, excuse me. That would be amazing if I'm director of Google, but I had somebody who was just as awesome. The director of GE Digital come and talk about being an entrepreneur. So if you're not like ready to start your own company and you're, you're a super smart, excited engineer to work on a project of like a small group of people, how do you do that? How do you find a champion inside of a large company and be entrepreneurial? Um, and then like building a pitch and um, what to say to investors once you meet them, um, which was really fun too. So the women could choose which sort of path they wanted to go on. All I had to do was come up with a space and like a program and money, or excuse me, like food and they came. Like if you build it, they will come. So it was kind of an awesome way for me to cap my masters off with this event. And it was great to finally get some funding and actually be able to put it together. I put, after I put together that, that uh, event, I was able to use some of the money to go to the, tra- the class trip to San Francisco and then go to another female investor event in Boston. And at those two different places, I met two female VCs who were like, I think you're onto something here working in VC. I know a venture firm called FF Venture Capital. Uh, those guys are, they're not, those guys are not trash. Like I know at the time there was a lot of problems with Ellen Powell and Kleiner Perkins. And there was a lot of like talk in the industry about it's very sexist and it's very tough. And that was only a couple of years ago, but things have changed so much. People are really on notice. So it was cool to get the thumbs up from two female VCs to say the founders of this VC firm are awesome and you will be safe there. So I said, okay, like two different people unsolicited are telling me about this firm. I'm going to apply. So I applied, I got the phone interview while I was still like, you know, trying to figure out where my gown was coming in for graduation. And then by June, (laughs) I had like an in-person interview in Manhattan and interviewed for the position of partner operations manager, which is basically like a chief of staff. I didn't have staff at the time, but like chief of staff to the partner, just meaning like you run their calendar, you know where they are all the time. You go with them to board meetings you source, you can source deals if you're good at that, but mainly you have helped them evaluate deals, help them run pitch calls. So like if a founder wants to talk to us for 30 minutes, you take notes and give them your opinion at the end of that and then start the due diligence process. So those were all things that I just was super psyched to do because it's right in my wheelhouse of like analyzing technologies and figuring out, you know, what, what I think the commercial opportunities are for them and like what their maybe exit opportunities are. So I started off as partner operations manager at FFBC, and then I pivoted into more of an investment role as I started to pick up more responsibilities on boards by obviously just attending them. Like the the partner I work with is super transparent and very encouraging. So he would fly me to San Francisco, LA, Canada, Texas, you know, wherever our board meetings are, he would let me tag along. And so I would listen to this, the issues that were coming up at the board level, follow up with the founders and the team on how to work through some of those problems as a consultant in a way, and then help them with their follow on investments. So that showed the partnership that I was ready for more responsibility, like negotiating term sheets, moving into other deals, closing those deals and being helpful post investment as sort of like an investor advisor as you would for your own portfolio. So now as a senior associate, that's mostly what I do. Bravery, clearly, because it's crazy. (laughs) Um, Bravery, persistence in like a sort of elegant way. I've I've seen a lot of people do it inelegantly, but like there's a way to do it. I think there's a way to sort of pound on doors and and get attention um, that's graceful. So bravery, persistence, and um, an ability to like maybe just an ability to tell your story really well, like an ability to sort of speak properly, even if it's, even if English is your second language or your third or whatever it is, like, that's okay. As long as you're showing um, that you understand the narrative and you're presenting it to people in a way that's easily understandable to them, you know, even in broken English or whatever it is, like we see founders from all over the world. And I love when they can tell the story of their company through an analogy or like some kind of interesting story because then it's just clear right from the bat and we're in, we're engaged instead of like marketing speak and all kinds of BS, like nobody wants to listen to that.
like the alumni network I swear it's super strong I'm not plugging because like I don't you know I don't really go to the events as much but like having RPI on your LinkedIn when founders look you up it just it's gold it really is especially in this industry so be proud you're doing great things